Well, welcome back. Um, I'm Paul Sexton, aka Senior Paul. I'm Jill McClanahan. Nice to be back with you. Yep. Today we're going to be looking at um, our first of seven habits. Of course, you know that we're going over uh, the seven habits um, that can, you know, help us to make our family a little bit more effective, a little bit more cohesive, um, and just help us out in general. And so today's habit is called be proactive. And so, you know, Jill and I have been sitting here talking about things. She was telling me about a little situation she had on the road where she had a chance to be proactive or reactive. And so Jill, tell us about that a little bit. I'm on my way to work and out of nowhere, the, I mean, I'm on in a residential neighborhood and this guy thinks it's a good idea to come around and cut me off in traffic. And there are a lot of things I really wanted to do, but I could feel my emotions just like welling up inside me, just like this. And if you can see that, that and really thinking about it, that's the way I feel right now. Just go ahead and pop the top on that thing, Jill. No, let's not do that. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so, you know, think about it. If, if you are, and you're, you're bound to be put in that situation at some point in your life. I know I'm probably in it too often, driving back and forth. Uh, I've got about a 45 minute drive to work every day. And so I see that all the time out on I-73. And um, I see people who react like Jill said that she wants to react because I'm this, right? <laughs> but I see people like this. And if you notice the difference, a few little bubbles come to the top. But if you open the top on this one, you know what's going to happen. There's going to be an explosion. Just like with us, when we blow our top, there's an explosion of emotion. And you think about it, you're really not affecting the person in the car. They've already cut you off. They're going down the road. They're in front of you anyway. They've kind of got themselves in the right position. You're in the wrong position. But you know, there's people that are riding down the road and they get cut off and they hit their brakes. They take the cruise control off. They're choosing not to be reactive like I would choose. They're choosing to be proactive. They've already decided, you know what? Sometimes people on the road do things that maybe I do sometimes myself. Maybe a little grace is necessary. Sometimes just let them slide a little bit. That's so, true. And sometimes you... It's hard because you want to be reactive and you think you're going to feel better about it. But even when you are reactive, there's a lot of things that, feelings that come after. Yeah. And you're like, I, I would much rather be proactive and deal with it calmly than the aftermath. You know, I think the thing about being reactive is when you're reactive, somebody else is controlling the narrative. When you are proactive, you've already produce the narrative. You know how this thing's gonna go. This is gonna go my way. I'm in control. When I'm reactive, I'm always in control because when I'm reactive, I'm reacting to something else. When I'm proactive, I'm just, you know, making a decision to say, hey, I'm not really gonna react to that. I'm just going to live my life and be happy. You know, weather. I am not a weather fan. I am one of these people who, when it comes to weather, I don't like rain. I know it's necessary. <laughs> I know that, you know, it, me not liking rain is not going to change the fact that it does rain. But sometimes if we use that, um, we could use it as an analogy, actually, you know, because we can sometimes create our own weather. And sometimes, you know, on a very beautiful sunny day, it can be very cloudy in our world. So we're going to watch a video that talks a little bit about this. Sounds A little technical difficulty, we'll be right with you. Monday morning, and it's raining. A gray, melancholy day. On a day like this, maybe we can be excused for feeling gray and melancholy ourselves. We get into a mood, and the whole day seems to go badly. Don't you feel better when the weather outside is great? 
But what if you could carry your own weather within you? What about the social world we live in? Don't you feel better when you're treated better? That's being reactive to what we could call the social weather, the social culture. When you carry your weather with you, you can choose to be consistent regardless of how people treat you. That's what it means to be proactive. Being reactive is the opposite of being proactive, not taking responsibility for our own life. You always see yourself as a victim of the weather, of your moods, of someone who has it in for you. Habit one is based on the principle that your life is the result of your own decisions, not your conditions, not what's happening around you. That's why habit one is so foundational, so basic. Unless you practice habit one, you can never practice the other habits of highly affected people. Years ago, I was doing research in a library in Hawaii. While thumbing through a book, I came across an idea that changed my whole outlook. The author said something like this, between what happens to us, that is the stimulus, and our response is a space. In that space lies our power and our freedom to choose our response. And in those choices lie our growth and our happiness. This insight sunk deep into my heart. Even in the midst of challenging circumstances, we have this exhilarating power to choose how we will respond. For instance, the great Viktor Frankl, the Jewish Austrian psychiatrist imprisoned in the death camps of Nazi Germany during World War II, experienced unbelievable indignities and tortures. He was raised to believe that you are basically a product of your childhood. But while he was in the death camp, he began to observe some very interesting things. Different people reacted differently to the same circumstances. He himself experienced terrible things. Some of his own loved ones were killed. One day they stripped him, put him under lights, and performed experiments upon his body. At that lowest possible point, he discovered what he called the last human freedom, the power to choose your own response to any condition, to anything that happens to you. During his darkest moments, Frankl would visualize himself lecturing to his students in Austria following his release. He pictured himself teaching them about the very experiences he was having then. He came to believe that the most basic human capability of all is that between stimulus and response, man has the freedom to choose. Frankl later determined the thing that enabled survival in the death camps was not necessarily intelligence or survival skills, but a sense of purpose, a contribution yet to be made. This became the basis for his brilliant autobiography, Man's Search for Meaning. It's not what people do to us that hurts us. It's our chosen response to what they do that hurts us. As Gandhi put it, they cannot take away our self-respect if we do not give it to them. We must simply never build our emotional life around the weaknesses of other people. Otherwise, we give them permission to continue to mess up our lives. We give our future away. Several years ago, I was making a presentation on this subject of proactivity, and a woman stood up in the middle of my speech and started to give a speech on her own, spontaneously. She was filled with explosive learning and excitement. You can see in her eyes, her gestures, her body language. And then she sensed the inappropriateness of what she was doing. She sat back down. I could hardly wait until the break to talk to her. What happened to you, I asked. She shared her story. She said, I'm the full-time nurse to an extremely miserable man. He doesn't even acknowledge me, let alone show me any form of appreciation. She went on to explain that this elderly man, entrusted to her care, was absolutely miserable 
and took his misery out on her. She was becoming more and more depressed and hated the thought of going to work each day and facing this irritable man. All of the other nurses felt the same way. They talked even of his demise, wished for it, hoped for it, while they were taking care of him. Then she said something to me. For you to stand up there and suggest that I am choosing to be miserable was almost too much. But then, listening to you, I suddenly realized that I do choose to be miserable. Before, I believed I didn't choose it. He made me. But then I realized how dependent I am. I've given my power over myself to him and his miserable behavior. As I thought about what you were saying, she said, I realized I had the power to choose and felt like I had been let out of prison. That's why I stood up. I could not contain myself. I just can't tell you what that means. This feeling of freedom is almost overwhelming. We have the power and the freedom to choose, to create our own weather each day. As Fulton J. Sheen once said, each of us makes his own weather, determines the color of the skies in the emotional universe which he inhabits. I think that's extremely powerful. It is powerful. And I think we all experience it. I think we experience it as teachers. I think we experience it as parents. I think we experience it as employees, maybe the boss. You know, when I was listening to that, I thought, I thought about my classroom today. Because, you know, so, so often um, I like, you know, what was said in, in, in the video when he was talking about how he was studying in Hawaii. He said that someone had written between what happens to us, and that's the stimulus. That's what sets everything in motion. And our response, whether we react or whether we're prepared to not react, it says in that space lies the freedom and power to choose our response. And in our response lies our growth and our happiness. You know, most of the time, if I react in a negative way, most of the time you can, that weather, that sunny day that I'm having inside my and, and I'm not just gonna say that today I started off the day I, I, I made this statement last night. Probably shouldn't have made this statement. My wife said, don't say that out loud. I said, it's been the most wonderful <laughs> week I've had at school all year. Um, and then today, one of my classes just went south. And, you know, I was sitting there. And, and at first, I was wanting to be angry. And I just wanted to just, you know, really go off on the kids. And then I thought, you know, not really going to do any good. Because the, the kids who are doing the things that they're going to do, they're going to continue to do the things that they're continuing to do. But I thought, you know, I need to address this thing. So I did it calmly, you know, and I tried to stay on that calm level. Now, of course, I had to elevate my voice to make sure that they understood that, you know, that I was in authority. But I wasn't going to give them, you know, the um, control of the classroom, the control of my emotions, the control of the way that I was responding to what was going on. I wanted to be in control because I wanted them to see, you know, first of all, as the adult, that's where I need to be. And as a role model, whether I choose to be or not, they need to see that I'm going to respond in a way that models the way that we expect them to respond. Tough day, though. I love it. I love the way that um, you were able to process that and move through with it because there are some times when it's like, oh, I've just had it. <laughs> I'm just, and I feel like this right here. Um, and I have to say, when you, when you mentioned that, there's a seventh grade teacher that does a really good job of never letting the kid, like kids get or go. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, and I just, and I tell myself all the time when I walk out of that classroom, I'm like, I need to be more like that sometimes because I, I can be reactive. Um, but it, it, those are good lessons. Yeah, and yeah. We can learn from what we've experienced 
during the day. And I really I appreciate you sharing that. And we don't always make the right we don't always make the right choices. We you know sometimes uh, even being proactive sometimes we still react somewhat. And so, exactly. You know that right there's what we were just talking about. Mm -hmm. It's just all about you know. I've got that little moment of space and sometimes, you know, depending on whether you're at work or whether you're at home and you know, as a parent, uh, sometimes your kids get on that very last nerve that you have. And sometimes I have found, um, whenever I would go to discipline my child, um, I would find that I, I made a choice never to discipline my child when I was angry. I always made sure that I took a moment and that's something that we're going to look at in this next little bit, because there, there are three steps that they say that we can use that kind of help us to control our emotion and our anger in a situation. And long before I ever saw this, I was already practicing it in my life. And, and I think, you know, a lot of times it came through um, messages that I heard at church, um, things that I had read in books, you know, about being a good parent and doing all those things. And, and I still, I don't know about you, but sometimes I still feel like a failure as a parent. You know, I, I did the best I could, but I know that sometimes I didn't do as good as I could have done, even though I thought it was my best at the time. But, you know, the first thing right here, we're going to look at three steps that kind of uh, are, are something that we should try to follow. That first step is to pause. You know, I find myself doing that often. Um, I do it with my wife. I mean, there are times that my wife will say something, and I'm sure that I do the same thing to her. I just have to pause. I just, sometimes I'll say, I need a minute. And if I take that pause, you know, and like on my TV, if I want to pause, I just hit the button. I don't have that. You know, and they suggest, you know, just pick a spot, whatever it is. You know, maybe right here. <laughs> this is my pause yeah, button. my pause button. Just press that pause button for a second and just say, you know what? Before I say anything, because you know how it is, once you say something, you can't take it back. Once you do something, that action can't be undone necessarily. So that pause, that's that space between the stimulus and the reaction. And that pause is important. So that's the first step. You know, just uh, take just a minute. Um, stop. And think about that. So what choices can I make in this moment to deal with what just happened? So, like you said, whatever I choose to do is going to have consequences that follow. Absolutely. I mean, sometimes thinking things through is all about seeing it from a different perspective. You know, we talked about paradigms last time we were together. And sometimes the way you see it, the way I see it, is completely different. Sometimes I think that our situations, our arguments, our confrontations come from those different paradigms. They come from those different perspectives. And when I stop and think for a moment, if I think, kind of like he was talking about in that video a little while, if I look at it from where you are, I might appreciate it a little bit different because you know, uh, when he was talking about Viktor Frankl, he was there in those concentration camps. He observed other people, and I imagine that's probably what allowed him to keep his sanity. By observing them, he saw that people reacted differently. Different paradigms, different perspectives, different reactions. And it wasn't necessarily based on their physical strength. It wasn't based on their mental aptitude. It was based on the choice that they made, which is that third step. After we think about it, choose and then choose wisely and choose a, a, a response where, you know, it's not going to be combative and it's not going to be confrontational, but it's going to be something where both parties can win. And grow yeah, as well. Absolutely. That's wonderful. So... A family member says something mean about you and you get angry. What do you do? Punch him in the face. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> you might want to. That's your reactive response. I'm going to pause. I'm going to pause. I'm going to think about it. Yeah. And, and then I'm going to make my choice based on it. And, you know, I think this goes back to what we were just talking about with the children. And I'm sure you had to do the same thing. There were times that my kids did things that all I wanted to do was reach out and tear that fanny up. I know. And I have to think about, like, where's that coming from? Like, you do have to pause and think, where is that coming from? There's a source to that sometimes. Oh, my gosh. That's funny. So, choose it. So, choose a situation where you tend to be reactive. Whew. I, don't know. I, I think my biggest reaction like, was when the kids were younger and I'd come home and nobody had fed the dog. Why is that always my job? <laughs> and I would be reactive about that. I, I mean, still have that problem at home. I'm like, I got four why? people in the house. Four people in the house, and I still don't... feed the dog. <laughs> Does anybody know we have a dog? Like, yeah, the, the dog's reaction is laying on his back like he's about to die. You know, he's having been fed all day. It's just like I'm so glad you're <laughs> Maybe he needs to get proactive and bite on the ankle. Where's my food? <laughs> but I'm, like, I'm not going to take the dog and throw him out no, and get rid of him. I yeah. still love him. Yeah. But yeah, what are some choices I can make? And put a chore list on the board and a timer for the kids. And that's a good one. 
Yes. Yeah, that's a good one. Choose which special response will choose. The key to your family culture is how you respond to the one who tests you the most. Mm. That's not just the key to your family. <laughs> that's the key to my classroom, all six of them. They know which button to push. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and and you, you know, it, it, as a parent, you know, you got, you got that child. That they know exactly where your button is. They sure do. And they know exactly how long to push it. And they know how long to stay their finger on that button and how, how soon they need to run when they let their finger off. And it's amazing, like, if they're doing their homework, they never know the answers, but they know every memory that they can use to make you angry. Like, Robert, you said this. Remember that? That was like five years ago. No, I did not. But can't remember two plus two. <laughs> but they don't, they don't know any answers to homework, but they got all the answers about <laughs> how you've made them mad. That's funny. You know, it's like this. Um, our ability to be proactive is kind of like exercise. It's a muscle that has to be developed. And in order to do that, um, I like the way the program talks about four unique human gifts. And when you think about this, really, I mean, this is nowhere else in the, in the world. You know, you, plants don't have this. Animals don't have this. We as humans, we have this. We have this self-awareness. We have conscience. We have imagination and we have independent will. I am very aware of my weaknesses as a parent. And because of that, my wife and I, we, we partnered. There are certain things that I wouldn't handle discipline-wise, but I would let her handle because I was aware of, of my shortcomings. And that was very beneficial to us. That came from conscience. You know, I would think about it because I like, the last thing I ever want to do is say something that hurts my children or do something that hurts my children. And so my conscience kind of guided me. Well, then, you know, in my imagination, of course, well, I can come up with all kinds of ways to punish my children. I can take things from them. I can ground them. I can do all kinds of things. But that independent will right there, I think that's the one that was really key for me because at the end of the day, these are my children. I love them. They are a part of me. I'm a part of them. And what I really want is not for the discipline necessarily to be something that hurts, but the discipline is something that allows them to learn something. So that not only do they, like you said a little while ago, not only do they realize this is not okay to do again, but they grow from it. And then they become those proactive thinkers mm -hmm. rather than those reactive children that we are too often. And I love that imagination piece in there because you can imagine, I mean, I'm glad that we're gifted with that because you can imagine what um, your reactions could result in Very and how point. that, yeah, and how that changes everything. Excellent point. Yeah. And I like the imagination part too. Very good. So mm -hmm. we need to develop our four gifts, I guess, to be mm -hmm. pro more proactive. So. Yeah, um, I'm thinking about that self-awareness right there. I'm, uh, I can't think of how many years that I was in that reactive category where it says, you know, I'm not aware of my thoughts and my actions because basically when you're reactive, you know, if, if I get angry, I want revenge. And it really doesn't matter what the rest of the world says or anything like that. I'm just going to, I'm going to satisfy myself, you know. And to move to proactive, you know, I'm going to stand apart from myself. I'm going to observe my own thoughts and actions. And then I'm going to judge those thoughts and actions. And maybe even look at it from a different perspective and say, would I want somebody to react to me in that way? Mm -hmm. I think that helps me. And I, the, this being proactive is one of the most important habits, I feel like, to teach our students here at our school. Um, coming, especially coming back from a pandemic and you're having to socialize and get along with other people. Um, they, we're, they're really quick because they're just kids. And they're quick to react. Yes, so teaching are. them how to be more proactive is super helpful. Um, Ooh, grade ourselves. Oh, yeah. Oh. So take a look at this and grade yourself. See how you, you don't have to report in. There's no homework here. No, I'm going to grade myself because <laughs> this is just what I do. I, I, just, I need to be accountable. Right. Able to stand apart from my thoughts, feelings, and actions and see how they impact my life. Ooh. Um, I don't know where I'm going to fall on this right here. I'm probably going to fall somewhere in the middle I'm gonna put, on this one. I'm going to put me there too. Okay, so we're both going we're, we're, we'll just do this. Yep. We're both there in the middle. Uh, conscious, I listen to my inner voice to know right from wrong. And I know sometimes, even though I hear it, I do the wrong thing. Oh, I, I hear it. But <laughs> isn't there a big difference between hearing and listening? Right. I hear all kinds of noise going on, but I don't but listen I'm not to really it. really listening. Right. Yeah. 
too. Yeah. Not always. I got a lot to work on. I do too. Yeah. I visualize greater possibilities to myself. I frequently do that. Do you? Frequently? Okay. <laughs> All right. Greater possibilities. Am I meaning them? I don't know. I'm going to have to say sometime, I, I'm not the greatest visionary. I um, I see things as they are more than I see them as I want them to be. That's a good point. And so I wish I were more here. And I, and I could work on it. It's a muscle I can develop. Right. I always feel like I'm headed toward some space that I'm never going to get. Like, that's where I want to okay. go. I'm able to act independent of my external influences, my independent will. I'm right there with you. Yeah. But I think that all these things are what makes us human. I do too. This is our journey yep, this, as human beings. And this is recognizing my weaknesses. Exactly. And when I recognize my weaknesses, it gives me the opportunity to make those weaknesses strengths. Right. You know? Right. At least exactly. I, that's, that's the way I see it. Exactly. Cool. So, what does it mean to be reactive? And so we're going to kind of role play here and talk about what that means. And you can do this at home with your student, your child, or a spouse. So um, what does it mean to be reactive? I think that it means that I'm just acting on my gut instinct. I'm not forward thinking. I'm just going with the, my feelings and my emotions, and I'm letting them play out until I feel really bad about it. <laughs> Absolutely. And I, and I agree. And I wish I, I were less reactive and more proactive. I'm, I'm, very, um, I'm very emotional. I've been that way all my life. Um, it's something that, that I have worked on. I think I've done some improvement with it. But really and truly, if, if I think about it, if I want to be proactive, I've got some pretty good tools right here. Pause. I've already practiced that some with my children you know, at home. Uh, and even here at school, I've, I've paused many times. Think. You know, sometimes I think too much. <laughs> but, <laughs> but then the, the choices. You know, if you think about it, those choices are decisions that I make that affect not just me, but they affect everyone around me. Those choices are huge. And that stopping for just a moment, really thinking it through, can help me to make the proper choices. And I've seen that, and I'm, I'm sure you have too in your life. Exactly. And where are we now? Oh. Our circle of concern. Oh, yeah, this is awesome. And our circle of influence. So when I think about my circle of concern, and this is, this is a great thing for our students because the idea of she's he's looking at me or she she's talking about me you know that's a circle of concern we don't have any control over who looks at us or who talks about us but my thing is if somebody's talking about me it must be something awesome about me and makes me want to, what makes them want to talk about me so that's a compliment but the circle of concern i don't have any control there so right now gas prices right now <laughs> Where is the majority of my conversation, my thoughts, what is controlling me right now? Yes. When I drive by the gas station, when what was costing me just a little while ago was less than two bucks, and now I'm paying over $4 for it, right. and guess what? We can sit here and fuss about it all day, and guess what? It ain't going down. We have no control over it. <laughs> we have no control of it. Yeah, we have no control. I have no control of it. I mean... And death. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, others' actions, none. I don't have control over these things. Mm -hmm. But where do we spend the majority of our time? In our Worrying minds. Our minds over it. Here. Worrying about it. Right. In that area right there. Here. This is our circle of influence. This is where we decide to be proactive. Mm -hmm. Right? The circle of influence means that I do have some influence there. You know, if I want to do something about this, the best thing that I can do um, is go and talk to people that can have some influence mm -hmm. over this. Here, i got to talk to people. And you say, well, who do I talk to? Well, I, I can't answer that question. Right. But others' actions. You know what? Can, I, I can't change their actions, but is there some way that I can influence them? Right, and I can change the way I react to their Absolutely. actions. Absolutely. So you may be acting this way, but I don't have to do the same. No. So yeah, right, yeah this, is, this is a lot of reactivity going on right here and a lot of pro, a little exactly. proactivity. Notice the difference in the sizes. Right. And I, and I think that probably most of us would say that we spend most of our time, you know, fussing about things that we have no control over. Right. And no influence over. That's really interesting and true. All right. So, 
Um, we can take some time, you can do this at home, to share what you wrote on your sticky note for circle of concern, your circle of influence, and what you can control about yourself. How do you feel when you focus on things in the outer circle or the circle of concern? I think we kind of, I mean, you could feel, I could feel the tension when you put the gas <laughs> right there. Like, oh. That was the whole point. I'm no problem at home. You <laughs> felt the same way. Because when you stop to fill up that tank, it's like, are you kidding me? This was me pumping gas, you know, when it was $2. I know. <laughs> me pumping gas now. For days. It's yeah. like <laughs> there for a long time. <laughs> How do you feel when you're focused or energy on your circle of influence and especially on what you can control about yourself? And that's true. Like it, we're taking up so many life minutes thinking about the um, circle of concern when we really should think about, okay, how can I influence this? How much, how, we're spinning our wheels. Yeah, and, and, and unfortunately we're wasting a lot of energy in areas that we can't control. Exactly. So here's what happens. When you focus on the circle of concern, your influence shrinks and your trust decreases. Just because I'm spending all my time worried about gas prices, taxes, and what other people are doing, and all of a sudden I don't have any energy to influence anything else. I don't feel like doing this. I don't want to talk about that. I don't have time. And that, that one word right there and that last sentence, trust decreases, mm -hmm. it really does. Because I become ineffective. Right. Because my energies are being spent on things. I'm spinning my wheels. Yep. And going nowhere. Uh -huh. So then when we focus on our circle of influence, our influence expands and our trust increases. So, and you feel liberated. Yeah. This is, you know, it's kind of like this. Have you ever heard, um, don't be part of the problem, be part of the solution? solution. And Patrice is really good about this. She's, she, we've got, you know, we're a little concerned about some things right now in the school as far as like calendars and things like that. And she said, remember that we are solution based. What she's saying is don't come to me complaining, complaining, complaining without offering some solutions. You know, well, this is what they're offering, but I think this would be better served, not because this is what I want because I think this is what would be best for our, you know, our community here at the school. And I like that because I can either be part of the problem and just go blah, 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 blah. Right. Or I can be part of the solution and go, hey, you know, I get why they did this, but I think this might be a little bit better. And sometimes we have a different paradigm, a different perspective, perspective. and hopefully they'll be open to that. And then we're the influencers. Exactly. Hopefully. By taking an inside-out approach, you become a leader and a powerful force in establishing your family culture. But I think that a lot of the activities that we did today and our discussions are great discussions at your family tables. Absolutely. Um, just, you know, if you took just a couple of minutes just to talk about your circle of concerns and your circle of influence and the ways that you can make a difference just for your family. Yeah, because kids fuss about the same things. It's yeah. not gas prices. It's that teacher. It's that <laughs> subject. It's that test. It's that kid. It's right. that, you know, teacher, whatever it is. But they have that, and they need to know that we all deal with these things. Mm -hmm. So, you know, at some point we have to talk to those, you know, talk to our kids about those things so that they can grow, so that they can learn. Exactly. So, habit one is the key to all other habits. Yeah. And the decision to become the creative force of your own life is the most fundamental choice of all. It's the heart and soul of becoming an agent of change in your family. I'm sold. Me too. I'm buying. All right, I've enjoyed today, and yeah, I'm looking forward to have it too, yep. which is? You know? Yeah. Tell us. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> it's begin with the end of mine? Begin with the end of mine? <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> all right. I've got posters on my board, so I see them all day. I was like, I didn't think about that one. It's begin with the end of mine. It is. All right, so we'll see you next time. Have a great night, y'all. Bye, guys.